Hi. In this video, we are going to see about the management of third stage of labor. Management of first and second stage videos already are there in the channel. And now we are going to see the management of third stage of labor. It includes the delivery of the placenta, examination of the placenta and perineum, and repair of episiotomy. Delivery of the placenta is having two stages. That is separation of the placenta from the wall of the uterus and it is falling to the lower uterine segment and second stage is expulsion of the placenta up through the birth canal. See, I have told you that the first step in, in the delivery of the placenta is separation of the placenta. There are two methods for the placental separation that is Matthew Duncan's method and Schulet separation. The Matthew Duncan's method is known as the lateral separ separation and the Schulet's is known as the central separation. And this lateral separation is having chance for more bleeding when compared with the central separation. And the second thing is the, in the marginal separation or the lateral separation that is marginal separation. In the marginal separation chance for retent retention of the membranes are there. And in the central separation chance for retention is very less. And the marginal separation the time duration which is taking for the separation will be more. But in the central separation the time duration which is taking for the separation will be less. So this is a separation uh, comparison of marginal separation and the central separation. So here you can see the picture of uh, Matthew Duncan's method and the uh, Schulich's mechanism. Central separation and marginal separation you can see. And now the important thing is signs of placental separation. That is after the delivery you have to wait for the signs of placental separation. After, once if you have observed the signs of placental separation then only you are supposed to apply traction on the cord for delivering the placenta. So this will occur within 5 minutes of delivery usually. In, in the case of separation of the placenta first the uterus will become globular and hard. That is uterus will contract and there will be sudden gush of blood from the through the vagina. So that is the second thing and third thing the uterine size or the fundal size will increase. Why means after the separation the placenta which is which will be located usually in the upper segment of the uterus after separation it will fall into the lower segment of the uterus and when it is occupying space in the lower segment of the uterus height of the uterine fundus will increase slightly and over the suprapubic region you can see a slight bulge also bulging over the suprapubic bulge also will be there it is because of the bulk of the placenta which is occupying the lower, lower segment of the uterus and externally you can see the lengthening of the cord if you are observing the cord you will you will feel as like length of the cord is increasing so these are the main signs of placental separation in the case of placental separation we can wait for the normal separation and expulsion of the placenta that is physiological management you are not interfering with that but in active management we will just take measures for the separation and expulsion of the placenta additional support will be giving for that so in that first one is uterotonic drugs that is the drugs which are producing uterine contractions so in the case of normal physiological management you are not giving the uterotonic drugs or you may give it after the delivery of the placenta but in the active management of placental delivery you will give it for the mother after the delivery of the shoulder after shoulder delivery you will give the drugs which are producing uterine contraction and these drugs will help for the contraction of the uterus and by that way it helps for the separation and expulsion of the placenta and next in the uterus in the uterus actually in both cases that is in active management and in physiological management we will just see the size and tone of the uterus and next one is cord traction in the case of physiological management we are not applying the cord traction but in the case of active management we are applying controlled cord traction when the uterus is contracted controlled cord traction means why you by using one hand you will be applying traction over the cord in order to pull the cord out of the uterus and by using the other hand this other hand you will be keeping over the abdomen and you will give, apply counter pressure over the uterus so that is control, controlled cord traction and next one is cord clamping in the case of normal physiological management you can wait for the normal 60 second and you can make, make sure that the baby is getting maximum blood all those things you can do but here you will go for the earlier cord, cord clamping 
Next is the active management of third stage of labor. Actually, this active management helps for the prevention of post postpartum hemorrhage. So for that, we are giving oxytocin. Uh, we are giving even other uter uh, uterotonic drugs and we are applying controlled contraction and we will massage the uterus to stimulate the uterine contraction. So first one is controlled contraction. Already we have seen it. Only do it after giving ergometrin or oxytocin. So after giving the drugs which are stimulating uterine contraction only you are supposed to do it. And you have to pull gently over the umbilical cord at the same time by using one hand. See this hand is pulling the umbilical cord. At the same time counter pressure is applied over the uterus uh, towards, the, towards her umbilicus. So and first pull the direction of pull also should be first it should be downward backward downward then backward and you can bring it anteriorly this is the way of applying contra controlled contraction and once the signs of placental separation have occurred the obstetrician assist for the delivery of the placenta by controlled contraction see first you have to wait and see for the signs of placental separation already we have seen the signs of placental separation once if it has seen you can go for the controlled contraction and if the patient is conscious and awake you can uh, encourage her to do the bearing down when she when you are applying the control contraction that also will help for the expression of the placenta so this is the way of applying control contraction one hand is placed over the abdomen and you are pushing that hand towards the umbilicus and by using the other hand you are applying traction and the components of active management of third stage of labor includes giving eutotonic drugs. So the drugs which we can give include oxytocin, ergometrin or mesoprostol or other prostaglandin drugs we can give. And the dose is if you are giving oxytocin usually giving 10 in we are giving 10 international units and if you are giving ergometrin we are giving 0.2 milligram and if you are giving mesoprostol we are giving 600 micrograms. And uh, stage of labor usually we are giving it immediately after the fetal delivery sometimes we will give it ergometrin we or methogen we may give after the shoulder delivery and the timing of uterotonic is within one minute of fetal delivery and mode of administration is oxytocin and ergometrin you can give im or iv iv drip or push you can give and misoprostol you can give orally and controlled contraction also you can apply and fundal massage that is massaging the uterus also you can done for stimulating the uterine contraction and you have to palpate the uterus every 15 minutes uh, continuously for two hours so for two hours every 15 minutes you have to palpate the uterus after the placental delivery next is examination of the placenta after the delivery of the placenta you should examine the placenta and membranes uh, so first you should see the weight of the placenta and uh, you should see the umbilical cord uh, whether two arteries and one vein is there or not that you, or not that you should see in the umbilical cord then you have to observe the placenta for the uh, completeness of the placenta you, you should make sure that all the 20 lobes are there and you are after if 20 lobes are there means you should go for the examination of the membranes for that you can uh, hold the placenta over the umbilical cord that is you will be put uh, holding it upside down so the membranes will be hanging downward so when the membranes are hanging downward insert one hand through the hole a hole will be there in the membrane where the baby has escaped so insert your one hand through that hole and make sure that there is no other holes in the membrane so it is complete so if any other holes or tear is there means some bits of placenta or membrane is remaining inside so observe these things in the placenta after the delivery of the placenta and next is examination of the perineum after the delivery after the expulsion of the placenta you should see the perineal area vulva and vaginal canal and even cervix for the uh, you have to examine for the presence of lacerations or tear if the perineum has been torn or if episiotomy is there means you have to go for the repair of the wound immediately Next is repair of the episiotomy. The suture is done in as early as possible in order to prevent the infection and the bleeding. And when you are suturing, you have to start from the apex, that is from the inner area, and you are doing in three layer technique. That is, first you will be stitching the vaginal mucosa, then perineal muscles, then the perineal skin. And for that, usually we are using synthetic absorbable 
uh, suturing material so you can use the vitral rapid so the, usually it will get fall off within 7 to 10 days after the stitching and if you are using these type of stitch or non absorbable thing you can reduce the postpartum pain and you can use the disperoni also otherwise you have to if you are using non absorbable material you should go for the removal of the stitch within within 12 days so this is the way of stitching first you should identify the apex here we should start somewhere over here and you should start to uh, start the suturing from the beginning so 1 cm above the apex that is actually you should start 1 cm this is the apex of the wound he, you are starting from here that is 1 cm above the apex of the wound you are starting and you have to put continuous sutures and end at the level of the vaginal opening then you, you should go for the muscle layer that is the vaginal mucosa then you should stitch the muscle layer and finally you should put the uh, stitches for the skin also in three layers you have to put this stitches next is management of first stage of labor so this is a period for the observation and for the checking so after the delivery for two hours it's a critical period so you have to observe the mother and baby closely you have to watch mainly for the signs of bleeding because there is a chance for postpartum hemorrhage and you should see whether bleeding is there or not and you should check the blood pressure of the mother you should check the pulse rate of the mother and you should see the uh, uterus you should palpate and feel the uh, uterus if the uterus is well contracted chance for postpartum hemorrhage is less so in the uterus you should see for the uh, firmness and you should make sure that it is not relaxed and if any clot is there inside the uterus that you should remove because the clots may interfere with the uterine contraction and you should see the vagina for the presence of bleeding and always you should empty the bladder otherwise the full bladder will interfere with the uterine contraction and the baby you should see that the baby is breathing well and the color of the baby is also not bluish the baby should be pink in color so notice all these things so the next thing is receiving the newborn immediate care of the newborn and immediate assessment of the newborn that we will be discussing in the next video thank you